Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel. In this video today, guys, we are going to be going through episode 7 of Limited Chat, where I'll be pretty much picking up from where I left off. We had some great comments on the last video. They will be featured at the end of this video, of course. I'll be kind of diving in a little bit deeper to the deja vu that I'm kind of feeling, trying to pinpoint exactly what opportunity it is I'm trying to discover. I'll show you some of the purchases I've made and some other market kind of observations. Hope you enjoy this one, guys. At any time, you laugh, you learn, you like something, whatever, please do like the video. It goes a long way to helping us get found. And if you've watched one or two of these already and you haven't, then go and just subscribe to the channel. Um, stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. Now, there's a, there's a sort of tandem point I want to get across right early in the video and very clear, okay? Now, whenever you're... So, how to say this? Limiteds have been here, relatively speaking, not very long at all, okay? Um, whenever you're going to... Whenever you're entering the so rare market, because of the size of the transactions that we're talking about, to get a rare, to get a limited, to get a super rare, whatever... They're all meaningful purchases in terms of the amount of money they actually cost. And if you are entering purchases of that size frivolously, then unfortunately you do leave yourself wide open to being burned in whatever way you know you, you care to imagine. Now, when I kind of think about the deja vu, I've been kind of experiencing in part of that with my limiteds as I've explained to you before. I'm just kind of looking at them as I'm locking away that if I'm burning it, I'm spending it. You know, I'm spent, I'm not putting it there on ice to try and get more out later or whatever. I'm just buying shit. <laughs> I'm just buying stuff because I want to, I can, and that's what I'm doing. So with that in mind, the last time I had that kind of experience was when I was diving into the super rare kind of marketplace now i'm not going to spend any longer than 30 seconds talking about super rares this is a limited video okay but whenever i bought super rares and throughout the time i have held them i've, very, I've sold very few um no matter what was going on in the super rare market ups and downs and oh you don't want to play d3 anymore the progress bar is going to make it much more attractive to play down the way or the prize pool in d2 is shit or you know whatever it might be that's going good or bad in that market it never influenced any of the decisions I made because a lot of those purchases because of how sizable they were a lot of money I go into them knowing exactly what I'm getting I risk manage with it you know what is the potential upside what is the downside and you've got to mitigate a bit of risk management towards that okay now everything I'm talking about here is speculation okay so if you're buying something and your hope is to at, for, at some point further down the road sell it for any sort of return to, to levy against your, your entry cost then that is a speculation now this cupboard that I sit and record my videos in is a treasure trove of speculation whether it be signed merchandise and memorabilia limited edition stuff mint and box stuff Star Wars stuff shit I'm just playing with because I love it whatever it is all varying degrees of speculation now when you speculate on a rare and what I mean when I say that in this instance is you buy one with the intention of selling it quite quickly or you know selling it as part of the model for the purchase okay that is speculation you can speculate on a rare with a much more with a much greater degree of confidence and with a lesser extent with super rares you can do this rather than limiteds because limiteds if you're to draw a graph of their prices for the last six months it would even fill the graph they've not even been here for six months whereas rares have been here for much longer super rares etc now what you obviously have in the mix with those things is different factors at play. Currency fluctuation, market growth, etc. Limiteds, even though they've only got that little six-month thing, they've not even got those other factors to even kind of draw upon. Okay, well, when the user base surges, this kind of thing has happened before with limiteds, and you can draw an hypothesis out of a speculation for an entry and an exit point on a player, for example. Or equally, the same kind of thing when ETH hits an all-time high or when ETH goes backwards, you can build a hypothesis from rares and super rares in terms of price movement to an extent. It's a very hard and difficult thing to quantify, of course. But with limiteds, you have no data. No data to be able to do that. So it is one of these things that you... I just cannot say it enough, guys. Proceed with caution. Make sure you research every purchase you possibly can if you're upset with the price of, you've picked up with some limiteds. The only thing you need to be upset about is it's making your exit point harder, okay? When I buy a limited, a rare, a super rare, there's only two prices that matter. 
and that's the price I buy it for and the price I sell it for. Everything in the middle is a little micro movement, you know, in terms of all oh, the, the market's moved up, the market's moved back, that type of thing. It is absolutely immaterial. It means absolutely nothing until you action uh, a transaction, you know, you sell something. That is the only point that means something, you know. So again, when I'm entering, I try and do my best because you can't nail it perfect every time. If anything, I don't think at the point of purchase, I've got many things perfect. It's very often... It's more a patience play and time evolves and then it looks like, oh wow, I did get a great price on that. But um those that that's the main consideration you've got is your entry point has got to be as safe and as comfortable as possible to give you as much um much oh what's the word? You get more maneuverability on when you exit something. Whereas if you do buy something like at peak, then when you sell something can be a bit harder mentally because you're thinking about potentially unrealized profit that you're leaving on the table for someone else to pick up or whatever so please bear that in mind guys if you're buying something with the sole intention of later on selling it that is complete speculation and with limiteds to do that you'd have to be quite brave or bullish because the data set just doesn't exist you know um yeah now this is what i've been up to since the last video and um, i have since realized I i've won a, a federico manquello who is one of the top players at Vela Sarsfield, who are one of the top teams in Argentina. A little rookie, Yanis Lang here. And there's a few more, I'll show you them in a second, talk about that um, for a minute. But I've also since realised that this Clinton Mola is a mole. He's not even a rookie. I managed to pick him up by mistake. The whole Bundesliga little thing, I think, is what put me off. And I was probably a bit blinded by that England flag, thinking, oh, there's an English rookie in the Bundesliga. And, you know, I've not paid very much for him. I cannot sell him for anything more than what I paid for him. If anything, it would definitely be for a loss. Um, but it is so insignificant. I'm just going to forget about him and put him next to Sam Nicholson and, <laughs> you know, uh, Pity Martinez and whoever else. But I went and picked up some more rookies again, you, as you can see for the price I paid for them. They're just all little cheap and cheerful guys. Didn't cost the grand sum total of sub £50 for three of them. You know, an Argentinian, a Brazilian striker and a German goalkeeper. You know, it's just, hey, it is what it is. Um, but with all the chat about the pricing going backwards on Limited and all the stuff I just mentioned in the kind of prelude to the video, like locking away E for burning the money, whatever you want to kind of think of it mentally. The mental gymnastics you play with yourself is important to make sure that you're making the right move for you, you know, if that makes sense. So with all that kind of stuff going about in my head, I'm thinking, right, what is an easy, safe thing that I know I can pick up and, you know, from here on out, whatever the price does, it does, and I can live and die by it. And I managed to pick up a Gavi for 0.101. I was trying to get them on auction below 0.1 and there just wasn't that many auctions. I feel like the velocity of auctions has went down and subsequently the next cheapest one after this was 20% more expensive. So I just went and snapped them off the... The secondary just to save myself the aggro and the FOMO of missing out and whatever. Since time we played a good game for Spain and everyone's talking about him again. And yeah, his price is now 0.15 or so, which is comforting for me to see a 11. So that was the auction I did go for. And when that bid came in at 0.098, it made sense for me just to go pick up the one from the secondary. Um, the other one was probably also picked up and then the auctions have went dead. And then when that happens, there was one auction here. Um and yeah so that was a nice entry point i'm quite happy with how i've done and that was a very easy one for me to action because as you'll know like my main thing with limiteds has been like some of the stuff like man city legends and i got a wee moscow rig out and i got a wee seattle rig out but the main thing in terms of fun quinny strategy i've just been going limited rookie any ones i can buy for pennies on the pound or whatever i've just been picking them up and dropping them in and i think i've got the trifecta i think i've got the be maybe the best three guys going i'm not too sure but i definitely say gavi and sesco are definitely top five contenders unquestionably and then maybe noah and bamba he's featured a little bit this year and i don't think there's anyone else pax naronson's probably up there as well in fact um so I've got a nice little rig. I've got 30 cards here now. A lot of doublers and treblers, which is kind of what I'm going for with the limiteds. I kind of want to try and collect a few pairs and trebles and whatever when I can. And the hope, because it is speculation, guys, like I said at the tip of the video, the hope is one of them hits and goes big. And I've got three, four limiteds sitting there. If I can sell one or two of them for some good profit, then it makes the strategy worthwhile and fun, you know, because, again, the ones I'll keep are limited, first prints, bad boys and if they go and have a great career there's still one or two that i can keep after selling some for profit that i can have fun with and the limited under, under 23s for the next like five or six years maybe depending on if they get into teams they get loans all that kind of fun stuff you know um so that's where i've been kind of at now the next thing that brought me to was right okay some of the big hitters 
that I'm thinking about spending rare money on. Where are they at? Because I was waiting for De Bruyne to come out with the Belgian auctions. There was no, there has been none. No Belgian limited auctions for De Bruyne at this moment in time. You know, there's like, how many here? 4, 8, 12, 16 limiteds. Very scarce card, which is cool. There should be a thousand of them. I don't know why they've not turned the auction cycle on. They clearly have the card ready to rock. And that is a sore one. Because with the increase in ETH and the at least the perception, which you know I think we've seen on the grass in Limited 6, that the prices are going back very obviously on Limited, then I was very interested to see how he would auction and if I could get what I would see as a relative bargain. The other card I'm kind of sniffing and hovering around, of course, is... The one that got away. You don't need an introduction if you're only listening to this, you're not watching the video. Um, and again, the one that got away, Big LG himself. No new German auctions. Now he's going a little bit cheaper, right? But I'm still, again, hoping. I think he's got an injury or something. I think somebody kicked him in the face. So <laughs> um, even a Bayern Goretzka would, would work for me. There's only been one of him still, which was a reward, you know. So again, very disappointing because... I can see with the Gavi that they have turned down the velocity of the limited um, of the limited auctions, but it seems to have maybe had an unforeseen impact on the national team cards actually getting any sort of volume released into the auctions. Um, Hey guys, so don't all forget on the limited chat series, you drop your comments in the comment section down below and they are featured on the following episode just so we can keep our finger on the pulse for what's going on in the limited marketplace, let's call it. So the first one comes from Sweet George. He's edited some of his grammar, I can see. Um, and Sweet George says, uh, I think they've just run out of puff. Hard to sustain those prices. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, lovely. We can see George now. I think they just ran out of puff. Uh, hard to sustain those prices for on so many cards. I did sell most of mine a while ago, but I've started buying again. Missed them. They're just really fun. Uh, it will be interesting to see what they do with Asia and America when the season ends. Wonder if they'll release the full 500 or maybe up to 300 or so. A bit like they never used to release all the rares. And I think we've maybe kind of touched on that and seen some evidence of that now, George, uh, in this episode here, just with the velocity of the auctions que clearly being altered and uh, a bit more muted, you know, so they're definitely always, uh, uh, up to this point anyway, I can say, hand on heart, they've been very good at controlling the market velocity as they have done, you know, so uh, yeah, time will tell on that, but like I said, when the Limiteds first came out, on that day, let's say there was 20,000 of us here, there is only an appetite for Limiteds to the first, you know, abstract insert abstract number, and I think we've now re we found that abstract number. It's not abstract anymore. It's a real number. It's like serial number 80 to 130, depending on how good the player is, you know. Maybe up to 200 if it's somebody like Messi or whatever, um, is when the appetite and the current user base diminishes. Because we have the limiteds we want to fuck about with. We've got enough to enter the one division per region we can. And then our appetite is satisfied. The price goes down because there's just less competition on the auctions, less desirability, yet yet. So... Geo, make you spot on my man. And Geo is actually, I think, a recent competition winner. So thank you very much for contributing again. Haggis Light. I like the limited cards. For me, I see this is an entry level way to get involved in the leagues that I enjoy watching in real life. The equivalent rare cards are just out of my budget for a lot of these players. I have bare bones ETH grinding team in D4. So with limited, I can have more fun. Ideally, I'd like them to introduce some lower ETH lower tier E threshold to the limited divisions even if it's just a lower tier reward from D4 but offered for hitting 275 and D5 or similar yeah I like that too it's a good suggestion I think I touched base on that somewhere at some point so great minds think I like Haggis Light and I think that would definitely incentivize the limited uh, divisions much more but again like I'm kind of speculating on with limiteds I expect utility to go up and I think <clears throat> what's so rare going to be probably quite carefully trying to manage at the moment is this migration that the game has from rares being the lifeblood to limiteds and that is going to become that is going to become easier as the as the, the, the user base the customer base grows of course but while it is just the incumbent you know they're already the, the guys that were already here since before limiteds it's really hard to just flat out give all the rare dynamics in terms of the eve kind of <coughs> excuse me guys sorry I've been trying to avoid drinking a wee kind of juice while I've been recording. 
or Twitter. Um, then there would be uproar. Market shifts would be phenomenal in terms of huge, you know, the size of them. Seismic is the word. And uh, I think they're trying, like, definitely trying to slowly navigate us maybe towards that. And I think that was the, I think that was the, the spirit of the progress bar was making the game easier, um, regardless of budget, taking the budget as much of out of the influence as possible. So we'll see what happens. Ray Gudgeon, I won an Asia card worth drum roll. Seven pound. I'm sorry, Ray. Um, I I bought a Clinton Mola for eight pounds. That makes you feel any better, buddy. Moldy, I have some limited players that have fallen in price, but I'm okay with that. The main limited players that I have I have bought are players I like to watch and rate. Some of these players I can't afford their rares, so I'm happy to have their limiteds and be more invested in the matches I watch them play in. I'm happy to build them. I'm happy to I'm happy for them to build up XP and maybe this will pay dividends in future game weeks and help me win rewards. Yeah, I'm kinda on board with you there, Moldy. You know, I'm happy just to get the guys like Goretzka, I just can't afford his rare. I cannot do it. I cannot buy a De Bruyne rare. I just cannot bring myself to do it. I just don't have the budget, the wallet for it. So I'm very much with you again there, Moldy Great Minds Finker Lake. Which is why I look at those guys for limiteds. But again, I'm not saying that I can't get Goretzka and De Bruyne and going, all right, well, I'll just go buy limited Joanne Jordan or whatever. I know the guys I want. I know I can probably afford them. Just give me the chance to get them. That's kind of where I'm at with some of them. Uh, they released a lot of cards at once, 20, I think. So the price by the last cards were 40% down. They now seem to release them in fives or twos, so the prices are staying solid. Ray is pretty much confirming what we've seen earlier in the episode, so thank you very much, Ray. Uh, Alejandro and Brex, how can I make a smooth limited to rare switch? I have over a dozen limited cards. Now, Alejandro, that's a big question. I don't know what the context of that is. Are you talking about just adding more on? Um, now, if the, the smoothest way to just, if you're just going to go buy fresh rares, keep the limited you've got and just make a progression up the way, the the the, the easiest success I've had with going from rare to super rare was buying super rares of guys I already had as rare, which isn't fun and isn't as exciting as going get a new guy. Go get a guy you've never had before. Big, shiny, new, expensive one. Done that too. It has worked out well. But when I picked up like Arturo Isaka for pennies, when I spent quite a lot of money on Koki Machida, when I got Jordan Larson, and I'm thinking if there's anyone else. They're the three ones that really stand out in my mind. Those guys not wobbled for me. I know exactly what I'm getting when I buy them. I'm happy with the price because I do a bit of research before, like we all do before we go and move up a level, whatever. Um, I've got way more stories of it going off the way when I'm going buying somebody new. I've not really, I've not been that close to this guy's situation and I bring him into the club and I'm like, oh, he's not really fancied by the manager. Oh, he's not really that fit. He's actually injured again or whatever. So for me, the smoothest way to switch is buy what you know. So if you've got limiteds that are kicking ass and taking names for you, can you get the rares? Yes. Brilliant. That's maybe the place to start. If no, it's just you're doing okay. You're not in love with any of the limiteds and it's like, I want to just go up. What are the best kind of rares to go for? I would be definitely looking at a lot of Turkey, a lot of Bundesliga and a lot of La Liga. I think a lot of those guys and Austria will be very much um, overlooked. There'll be tons of stuff in there. In between the weeds, if you really go digging and diving on stats, you'll find some, some great bargains, Alejandro. I've got no doubt about it. Uh, Mikey Basson, I did the same as you with Maida on Legit Limited, Mikey. Birds of a feather fly together, eh? Um, so yeah, check the last episode if you want to know what he's referring to. And Gaza, you might not be able to see him here because of my wee face, but... Um, He's just saying not dabbled in limited, just sticking with rares and SRs at the moment. And that's fine, Gaza. You know, some people, I think Perez is the same. There's a few guys that are the same, just kind of staying in your lane, just stick with what you know, which is cool. I think Hendo's done the same, in fact, as well. I was very tempted to do the same, but, you know, there's some guys here, I say, like, Goretzka, I would need to buy his limited, so I'm never going to be able to get, I'm never going to be able to get his super rare. I cannot stomach paying the money for the rare. So if I can get a, a le um, I was going to say a legend, sorry, a limited the guys like that, then I'm always going to entertain it because that's just the kind of guy I am. I like the players I like. I know what I know. And I want to compete as much as I possibly can. Um, guys, do not forget, comment section down below. Let me know what you're thinking and then we'll feature on the next video. As always, guys, do not forget, like, subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.